So today we are going to have a look at the traveling salesman problem. Um, the uh, traveling salesman problem basically says that we uh, consider a salesman uh, who is required to visit a number of cities uh, during uh, a trip. So the cities have some distances uh, given between them uh, and uh, uh, the idea is basically that we have to look at the order of visiting each city. Uh, so in this case we have to look at the order of visiting each vertex such that each vertex is visited once and only once excluding the uh, uh, starting and the ending so uh, that is the only exception in which it can be uh, visited uh, twice and uh, of course uh, since uh, there is the possibility that there may be multiple such itineraries uh, possible we have to consider uh, uh, a pathway in which the minimum mileage is basically uh, considered so one of the first thing which uh, you have to consider is that this problem uh, basically closely resembles that of a Hamiltonian circuit and just to remind you that uh, basically a Hamiltonian circuit is a closed walk where every vertex is visited once and only once so basically if you have a look at it we can even go one step further and say that basically we have a so-called Hamiltonian line so if you are able to solve this Hamiltonian line problem then you can go towards the uh, Hamiltonian circuit and then from this you can basically see that this is an extension of the uh, traveling salesman problem so in the rest of the discussion we, we we assume that we are looking at some complete graph uh, so uh, in the sense that everybody is connected to everybody uh, in, in the sense that every vertex is connected to everybody else but uh, this is just a case for this lecture in the sense that uh, maybe uh, um, uh, we can have an arbitrary shaped graph and in that it would be difficult to determine uh, uh, the tour uh, in the in the uh, problem so um, if you can consider the number of solutions so we have of course in order to solve this problem we can we can consider some brute force solutions uh, which uh, are related to which are related to basically complete search and we can also have some uh, dynamic programming based algorithms which are which are giving better performance than the complete search based approach and of course this will be not possible but we can then maybe perhaps look at some heuristics uh, and the heuristics may be able to give you uh, improved results compared to both the complete search based solution and the dynamic programming based solution. So since the um, problem is basically linked to the uh, Hamiltonian circuit, we can look at some properties of the Hamiltonian circuit. So for example, we can, we can consider the total number of edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits using this expression whereas the non-edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits are going to be represented with this expression. So if we consider an example like this, um, uh, this is a complete graph K4. So uh, if we consider the first expression, in this case the uh, total number of Hamiltonian circuits is going to be 4 minus 1, uh, is going to be 3 divided by 2, which is going to be around uh, 1 point something. So we can imagine that we can either choose uh, uh, the periphery of this uh, graph G or alternatively we may be able to consider um, a kind of a tie shape or a bow shape like this one of these is possible so either it is it is representing this or this one but but not not both okay so you can have a or relationship over here the reason is because you can notice that uh, one edge over here is common so we have to treat it as an or and on the other hand if we consider the case of the uh, non edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuit so in this case we will have uh, 4 minus 1 divided so this is basically equivalent to uh, 3 factorial divided by 2 and we can basically consider that as 3 into 2 by 2 is equal to 3 and in this regard we can may be, maybe perhaps consider that we have the first as uh, the same over here 
so we can have uh, the first graph G1 like this we can have the uh, second graph G2 like this and a third graph could be basically a, the a kind of rotated uh, bow shape so we can have this representation okay so in the sense that uh, if we consider all G1 G2 and G3 we can have a union of them and that is going to give us the the graph in its own representation now if we were to apply some cost on the edges over here okay so we could have a cost c1 2 c24 c34 and c13 uh, likewise you can have a c14 and a c23 in this regard so we can notice that when we look at these subgraphs which have been extracted on the basis of these properties one of them is going to represent a minimum tour which one is that the solution is going to represent the 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 answer which we are looking for likewise if you consider the total edge disjoint hamiltonian circuit so likewise we could have a kind of a minimum representation over here also okay which one well we have to in first consider that we have to enumerate all the possible constituent subgraphs like uh, g3 and g4 over here or likewise we have to consider all the constituent subgraphs g1 g2 g3 over here so uh, in that regard we may have one of the graphs as the solution but we can only look at it from a visual perspective in arbitrary shape graphs we have to uh, look at some algorithm which can retrieve the graph to us so for an arbitrary shape graph we will not be able to know what kind of Hamiltonian circuits are available or how they can be determined so we are left with looking at some algorithm based approaches and one of the most inefficient um, and naive approach would be the complete search based o to the o of n to the power n based approach in which we can imagine that there are a number of nested for loops and each for loop is going to be um, traversing uh, the total number of vertices and if we start with a null in this case over here so this is going to be our starting point the outermost for loop is going to go across the uh, you can say the uh, first set of vertices so this is going to be for i and then we will have another set of vertices for j so this is going to be for j and in this mannerism you can imagine that you can represent a number of different nested for loops hence we can say that o to the n to the power n is going to be a consideration but since many tours are available we can take the case of the outermost uh, edges over here uh, we can take the case of starting at null we can go to one and then you can imagine that this is this part and then this part and then this part so we have a tour like one 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 and one which is not a valid tour so we need some kind of constraints over here uh, in order to be uh, choosy in terms of which iterations are going to be accepted and which iterations have to be rejected and that is then possible if we take the second case in which we are looking at the uh, o to the n factorial based approach in which we can simply apply some additional set of constraints and some of these uh, three iterations are going to be removed so, and in this n factorial based approach we have some iterations which are removed as a result of additional set of constraints and the overall size of the tree is reduced uh, due to it and these constraints can be applied by taking into account some conditions like these so for example it's the same number of for loops nested for loops the only difference is that 
we apply some logic in the sense that we can consider that j is not going to be equal to i and then likewise when we come to k, k is not going to be equal to j and k is not going to be equal to i and this keeps on going. And since we still may have a possibility of some invalid uh, paths, we still need to apply some validity check whether the graph is going to, whether the two are going to be present in the graph or not. So in that sense, uh, we have to consider something like if i, j, k, l as a result of these uh, um, uh, control variables, if this is a valid path, we have to check whether the distance i, j, distance j, k, distance k, l and distance l, i is going to be representing uh, uh, quant uh, is going to be representing a minimum quantity or not. So we have to maintain a uh, minimum value over here and every time we find out that a new minimum value is present we have to perform a kind of a update over here and as a result this will result in a total of n factorial operations in order to determine the solution. You do have to take into account that in the previous cases when we were looking at the edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits and the non-edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits, we really did not have that many solutions. But when we look at this tree-based structure, we notice that there are many solutions. In fact, some of these solutions are basically repetitions. So for, for instance, if you take the um, cases of graph G1 over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 4, 3, we can see that this is basically reflected over here in this solution. When we take the case of 1, 4, 2, 3, we can see that this is basically graph number B over here. When we take the case of 1, 2, 3, 4, we can see that this solution is reflected over here. And if we take into account, and this is really all the solutions, the rest are all duplicates. So, and, uh, for, exa for example, if you take the case of 1, 4, 3, 2, we can notice that this is also C over here. But, as far as the algorithm is concerned, only three meaningful solutions exist and the rest are basically unnecessary calculations. And because of these unnecessary calculations, we can apply a dynamic programming based approach in order to prevent some of the calculations in this subspace not to be calculated again and again.